Good day, YouTube. One MJ here, and welcome back. Well, things are really, really starting to heat up in the crypto market at the moment. There is so much interesting news out there at the moment, and prices on things are just starting to go haywire. But look, let's start with this one. PayPal's quarter four transaction revenue rose 11.8% in first quarterly report since adding crypto. So in a quarter, they've gone up 12%. They'd probably be loving 12% in a year normally. And they have done that in a quarter. This is just showing you that crypto is really starting to build. Things are going to get so hectic and so haywire. Uh, I'm, I'm really... I'm more bullish now than I have been on crypto forever. Uh, I just, you know, I'm really trying to work out when do I think is going to be the top because, you know, some of me thinks it's going to be around uh, sort of that uh, September sort of mark. Again, there's a trading view chart that BitBoy talks about uh, and that's been pretty accurate. And so that says around about September we should see the peak. But, you know, this is different this time. But in saying that it's different, it's still the same as well. It's still crypto. It's still going to be a cycle. There is going to be a peak. And then there's going to be another bear market. But I do think maybe this one might stretch out for a little bit longer. But also, look, the peaks have generally come around December in the previous ones. So, you know, it's a chance that it, you know, plays out till at least December this year. That's the hard part for me at the moment is trying to work out where I think the peak is going to be and where I should be sort of taking profits. I will incrementally take some small profits along the way, but at the moment, I mean, I'm still investing. Uh, you know, Bitcoin under sort of, you know, 40,000, I think is still a relatively good buy. And look, even after 40,000, you know, once we get to the crazy part of the, you know, the full mania side, you know, the Bitcoin's likely to double uh, and triple within a week so you know if you can play that market then it's you know you can still get in uh, and if you're lucky get out but I don't recommend that uh, but yeah that's the part I'm trying to work out at the moment is where do I roughly think the peak is going to be so I can start to have a, a better exit strategy because I don't want to you know basically sell everything come sort of August September that I'm willing to sell and then find out that you know Again, we're not even close to the top and it keeps going through till you know, February, March next year, then I'll really be kicking myself because I'll have to start selling crypto that I didn't want to sell. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to work out. But again, it's things like this that make me super bullish. So again, PayPal's not, as far as I know, they're not even offering crypto to all of the world yet. I'm pretty sure it's just their US uh, constituents. I'll have to check that up. Uh, and I'll do that uh, for tomorrow's video. But at the moment, I'm pretty sure they're only selling to uh, US citizens. So imagine when they start adding it, selling it to the rest of the world. And again, I could be wrong on that. I'll do some more research. Now we go over here. Bitcoin for corporations. Michael Saylor expects an avalanche of firms to own Bitcoin. Now that happened today. The big... Uh, seminar that he was doing he had 1400 people going so they'll be from you know all major institutions sort of all around the world because some of it will be virtual uh, actually i think the whole thing was virtual uh again i'd have to check that up it probably would be because i couldn't imagine everyone's going to get together with all these covid sort of things going on but there were 1400 people that were sort of in attendance it might have been virtually uh, and I do think they're going to look at the plan. And the funny thing is, he's going to tell them, here's how you get into the market without, you know, sending the price sky high. But if 1,400 people all try and do the same thing, uh, it is, it, you know, and there it's not 1,400 people, it's 1,400 sort of businesses most likely. And let's say there's at least two people uh, from every business. There's still 700 and there's other people getting in. The price of Bitcoin is just going to start to rise, even if they try and do the same strategy as Michael Saylor. He was just lucky. He got in early. You know, he was, you know, the, one of the first big movers. He saw what was coming. He was, you know, first out the blocks and then everyone was a little bit sort of hesitant. I mean, look, Grayscale, Pantera Capital and things like that have been around for a few years longer. But now all these big other, other big institutions are starting to do the same. Uh, and look, I'm just glad that I got into uh, some Bitcoin, uh, you know, before Michael Saylor was even doing it. His average price was sort of about $9,000. I was lucky enough to buy not a lot, but I got some at sort of 5000 6000 and more around the seven kind of $8,000 markers uh, where, you know, my Bitcoin is sort of, you know, mostly got. And, you know, I only wish that I had, a, you know, had a whole lot more money and I could have invested uh, way more. But, you know, 
I had what I had and I invested and you just got to do uh, what you can with what you have. So yeah, I, I am super bullish at the moment. There's just so much good news. I mean, look, we go over here and Mark Cuban, so he uh, said that he thinks stock traders should follow the uh, great examples that uh, you know people from crypto have. Now, not everyone, but you know the true crypto enthusiasts and the hodlers do. So where was it? He said, uh, so we'll go this bit anyway. When I buy a stock, I make sure I know why I'm buying it. Then I hodl until I learn that something has changed. The price may go up or down, but if I still believe in the logic that made me buy the asset, I don't sell. If something changed that I didn't expect, then I look at selling. And this is so true. Markets will always have ebbs and flows. It'll be high, it'll be you know lower than when it was high, but they generally continue to go up. Now, where did I read this part? Uh, basically, it was talking about uh, how people bought in at the 2017 high, and that was me, like I'm one of them. I bought uh, September, October, November of 2017. This is when it was just going into euphoria, and I held. And that Bitcoin that I have now from 2017 is, ev is worth even more. But I had to go through the whole bear market. I didn't panic, I didn't sell, I just held on to it all. Uh, and now it's up again. Yeah, it took me sort of, you know, three years to, you know, get back to even, but now I'm above even. I am like way beyond, uh, you know, the even mark. Uh, and again, I didn't invest that much. I mean, I, I put in, I've told this story before, I put in a roughly about $800 uh, into cryptocurrencies in late 2017. I turned it into about $4,200. Uh, I then, you know, I was too new and didn't understand the cycles. I watched it drop and turn into three hundred dollars. So eight hundred turned into four thousand two hundred, turned into three hundred, and I simply just held. And it is now worth, I think, about sort of three thousand, nearly four thousand uh, dollars at the moment, something like that, thereabouts. Uh, I'd have to go back and check. I haven't really looked at it lately. But I just simply held, uh, and that is what you've got to remember. If you're getting into crypto right now. You are likely early, but crypto is a very volatile sort of thing. You may have about 30 to 40% less than what you currently have uh, in the next few days. That's the way it can work. But if you just hold for the long term, you know, the sky is the limit. Now we go over to here, uh, EIP uh, 1559 can't happen quick enough. And there's a story uh, over... Uh, I think it is, is this Flamingo? Yep, so people are flocking to Flamingo because of high Ethereum uh, fees and they really are killing Ethereum at the moment. And these layer two solutions, they just can't come quick enough uh, and ETH 2.0. But while that's, you know, the gas fees are high at the moment and they're really hurting, here was something interesting that they put down here. So Cointelegraph reported that one million Ethereum would have been burned over the 12 preceding months if EIP 1559 had been implemented. So imagine there being 1 million less Ethereum. Now there's a couple of, I think 100 million uh, Ethereum out there. I can't remember the exact number, but it's, it's well over 21 million, so don't worry about that. So imagine 1 million of Ethereum being burnt but then you need to remember Ethereum's also being created at the same time. But this uh, EIP-1559 uh, is very interesting and, and I am uh, super bullish on Ethereum. I keep saying super bullish, but I am just super bullish on crypto in general at the moment. There is going to come a time where I'm just not going to be super bullish on it. I'm going to be quite bearish on it for a period, but that is just the cycles. Now we have to wait and see if this is how uh, cryptocurrencies will just continue to play out. I don't believe cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum are gonna have the you know, 80, 95% retracements anymore. I think Ethereum could still have a fairly uh, big one. I'd say, you know, probably 70%. I think, you know, whatever top we get to uh, in Bitcoin, I would be surprised if it goes much more than 50% into retracement. So if Bitcoin somehow manages to get to, let's say 400,000, 
I would be surprised if it went sort of, you know, much below 200,000. I'm not saying it couldn't, but really I'd be thinking, you know, anything less than 100,000, 150,000 would probably be a steal because now institutions are into it. They're simply going to hold. They just, they're, they're here for the really long term. They don't need to uh, buy and sell and they're then going to move into DeFi and we'll have a look at DeFi. So, uh, we got to watch out for these hedge fund managers and that and be careful of the things that they say. So Guggenheim CIO under fire for the timing of his changing Bitcoin sentiment. He was bullish, he was bearish, and then he was bullish. And basically you go down here and it shows that, remember Guggenheim wants you to sell your Bitcoin so they may buy lower. Been trying to scare the market into thinking the price will crash to 20,000 even though they think it's worth 400,000. So it was around the 31st of January, 27th of January. Uh, you know, he changed his mind. He was like, we're bullish on Bitcoin. Then it was getting a bit uh, XY. And so he started to say, oh, no, we believe it's going to 20,000, uh, trying to buy it back cheaper. And then they eventually did buy. So be very, very careful about, you know, believing these people who are saying, number one, you know, whether they really believe it's going to 400,000. They want people to think it's going to there. Uh, you know, maybe it does. I don't think it'll go to 400,000 in this cycle. But then be careful when they're saying, oh, no, no, we think it's going to, you know, drop by 50%. They've always got an agenda when they say this. Always. And look, everyone does have an agenda. I've got an agenda. I'm super bullish about cryptocurrencies. That is my agenda. I'm not going to, uh, you know, make these kind of videos and slag off uh, cryptocurrencies and things like that when I'm super bullish about them. I believe in them long term. And no matter what happens, uh, if we see a 50% correction from here, which I just don't see happening at the moment, I'm still going to be bullish on cryptocurrencies. That's just going to be part uh, of the market. And look, a 50% correction may take a year to happen at some stage. But long term, I think crypto is here to stay. I think it really is the way of the future. I say that regularly. And look, more bullish news. So now, Visa to pilot crypto API, enabling institutions and banks to buy Bitcoin this year. So it's not just the retailer that they're selling it to. They're going to make it readily available for big institutional buyers and the banks to buy Bitcoin. And all the banks use Visa. Like what bank doesn't have a Visa card? I don't know too many that don't. Uh, I'm sure there's probably going to be a couple out there, but not too many. Visa is massive. PayPal is massive. You know, now these institutions and banks are all going to find easier ways to get into it. I really do think we're going to see some huge adoption uh, over this uh, period. I don't think we're going to go worldwide mass adoption. I think that's the next bull run for the retailers and all that. This is just building all the gateways and all the rest of it. Now, I found another interesting article over here. So River Financial, they're launching a mobile app for boomer Bitcoin investors. So the kind of old school people who just really don't understand you know, all this new stuff. So it's over 50s. Uh, and look, we need to make it a whole lot easier for them. You know, uh, secret keys and codes and all this, they will just get lost and it'll be too much for them. So upstart crypto exchange, River Financial, today launched a mobile platform for iOS. I think this is where crypto is really going to blow up uh, using mobile phone apps and things like that. It wants to make buying crypto easier for clients aged over 50. And this is what is going to lead to the big main scale uh, mainstream adoption for the older generation not so much the newer younger generation you know the kids in that they're just this is all going to be normal from they they're going to understand how it works but you know the older generation and the people with kind of the majority of the wealth at the moment which is people over 50 and generally over 60 you know unless they're really computer savvy they just they won't be able to get on top of ledgers and i've got to do this and i've got to save this code and i've got to make sure i put in the right address or i lose everything it's just all too much for them and look in the future, I think it is all going to be a whole lot easier. And, you know, there's going to be biometrics. You know, you have your face scans and fingerprint scans and all things like that. And it will become a whole lot easier. And that is the future. But at the moment, to get the real mass adoption, and particularly where the majority of the wealth is held, which is in the older generations, this is what's needed to make it super easy. Get them and they go, right now, it's just an app on my phone. I buy the Bitcoin and uh, this thing just holds it for me. But in saying that, you know, not your keys, not your crypto, I think we are going to have some of those problems with things like this because you won't actually own that crypto. It'll be like a, 
a paper-based sort of crypto, like people can own paper-based gold and all the rest of it. It'll be very similar. Not paper-based, though. It's just electronically based. But I would say you're likely never going to be able to take the Bitcoin off there. You'll simply be able to cash it out for cash. But look, things may change, and maybe they have it set up so you can buy it through their app and then send it out from there. We'll have to wait and see. All right. Grayscale, they're trying to explain, you know, Ethereum to some of their institutional investors. Uh, <laughs> and it is a very hard thing to explain. It has so many different kind of use cases. And I like how they described it down here. So the paper characterizes the methodology for valuing Ether, Ethereum's native asset, as opaque and changing. And it is at the moment. It's, it's very hard. But I think they summed it up pretty well. It suggests that you can either look at Ethereum as money, so as kind of the commodity intrinsic value for Ethereum network, so similar to Bitcoin, uh, or as an interest-bearing asset in the context of Ethereum 2.0, which involves proof of stake rewards as opposed, excuse me, to the traditional proof of work, work rewards that incentivize Bitcoin mining. Uh, and I agree, it, it's hard to say exactly what it is. I do think Ethereum is a store of value as well, uh, but I think it's more than uh, a store of value. I think Bitcoin will, you know, it'll have that store of value uh, to it. It'll be like the digital gold. It already is like the digital gold. Gold itself will still have a place, but it's going to lose massive uh, share to Bitcoin. Uh, and I think, you know, the gold store of value will still be there. It just, it doesn't have the upside that Bitcoin does. And look, I, theory, I think Ethereum has even more upside. I really do think, you know, the you know, contracts and, you know, all the other things that are happening, DeFi and all the rest of it, I think Ethereum will flip Bitcoin in the very near future. I'm not sure if it's going to be this bull run, but I think the next one, Bitcoin will always be the first and it will have that store of value and it'll be, you know, like gold. Uh, but then Ethereum will be like the, the newer, uh, kind of better version not so much better version for store of value, but you know it has so much more going for it. Hence, why I, I am more bullish on Ethereum than I am Bitcoin. I have my Bitcoin holding onto it, not letting it go, uh, and you know all the banks are getting into it like they did gold back in the day. That's their reserve currency, but they will move on from that and they will move into Ethereum. And they'll use all the DApps and apps and everything that is being built on there. But Ethereum really needs to get this, you know. Uh, sky high fees sorted because it won't hurt the big bankers and that but the little everyday you know mum and dad uh, you and me investors we just can't use ethereum it is just way too expensive you know you're paying 50 60 dollars to try and do a transaction on it and that just kills it for everyone all right let's go over here so 1.1 trillion dollars but this is pretty old so let's give it a refresh this is at least 40 minutes old what's happened all right, so still 1.1 trillion uh, Bitcoin. You know, it's kind of hit its kind of peak, let's say for now. But look, I don't think it's over by any stretch of the imagination. But look at Ethereum. It is on a mega run at the moment. You know, finally broke through that 1,400. Now we've gone to 1,600, 1,700, you know, 2,500. Uh, it's all going to happen very, very quickly. You know, Bitcoin dominance, it is dropping. Now we're down to nearly 60% and Ethereum uh, dominance is gaining and just altcoin dominance is gaining. But again, look at these gas fees. You just, you can't do anything at the moment with Ethereum whatsoever unless, you know, whatever you're doing has some layer two solution. So again, they were talking about Flamingo uh, up there, uh, you know, things like that. And, you know, Polkadot and Cardano, they are going to gain more and more ground. And I mean, look how Cardano's gone look how well polka dots gone uh and then so ethereum 32 percent 35 percent for polka dot 39 percent for cardano they are gaining ground on ethereum and it, i get ethereum needs to make sure that it's all done properly but they are going to continue to lose ground so while i'm super bullish on ethereum i'm even more bullish on polka dot and cardano in all fairness but look ethereum does have that first mover advantage it has more people building on it uh, so I think Ethereum is kind of the safer bet, uh, particularly in the long run. But at least in the short term, I think Cardano and Polkadot are going to do quite well. Uh, I think they're going to do extremely well. Uh, and the money that I'm putting in at the moment, I'm not really putting much money into Bitcoin at the moment on my you know dollar cost averaging. 
because I just think there's more upside. Uh, you know, Bitcoin's already in price discovery. Uh, Ethereum is now in price discovery. So it's not that they can't go much higher, but once you're in price to discovery, you just need to be careful. We don't know when they're going to have you know real big pullbacks. Uh, Cardano, not in price discovery. It's like a dollar eighteen, so you can still basically almost three x your money in Cardano of it just getting it to its old all-time high. Litecoin, still very similar as well. $151, I think its all-time high is like 360 so you can still double your money uh, on those, you know. They have yet to get to price discovery. So that's really uh, where I'm looking to put my money in things other than Bitcoin. But look, once I do start to make, you know, some really good profits and things like that, I will be taking some of those profits out, putting them into Bitcoin, and then taking some of those profits out, putting them into cash as well. Got to have cash on the side. Uh, again, USDC, I'll be using my BlockFi uh, to earn interest on that. Uh, and again, I've got Bitcoin in there and Ethereum on there uh, earning interest. Uh, and that is my plan. And again, uh, once I know the bear market uh, is you know, sort of happening, I'll make sure that I, you know, sell everything that I wanted to sell. I may not sell at the top, but I need to. I just need to be selling a roundabout somewhere to there. So if it's a little bit after it and I've lost 20% or 30% from the tops, then who cares? It doesn't matter. But I'll be taking those profits out uh, and looking to put them into uh, a business if I can. It all depends on how much I've got, but definitely a property. Property is kind of my first port of call. I want to get into property. That market, uh, yeah. There's that old saying, safe as houses, in saying that I'm in Australia and we're allegedly in one of the biggest housing bubbles in the world. But look, if you own it outright and it you know devalues by half, it doesn't really matter to you because you kind of own it anyway. You're not having to pay off a bank. But if you had a loan for something and all of a sudden it lost you know half of its value, then that would hurt. So again, for me, it really depends on you know whether I make enough to buy a property uh, in this bull run or not. If I don't, then I guess I just still have to take that risk of buying a property uh, and paying it off, uh, you know, bit by bit, and just hope that we're not in that kind of bubble that people talk about. But anyway, that's my uh, my plan, and I have spoke about that before. All right, what's really pumped today? Boom, Uma. They are on such a tear at the moment, but Aave, uh, I really, really want to get some more Aave. Uh, this is a great project and there's so much being built around it at the moment. Uh, and again, there's, you know, it's got its uh, European financial license and th there's so much upside to Aave, I believe, and Synthetics Network. Uh, and Chainlink, look, there's a whole stock, a whole lot of different DeFi projects that I'm super bullish on. And look, most of these are DeFi that are kind of really pumping. I mean, look at Polkadot. Polkadot's not DeFi, but it's got DeFi on it. Uh, Sushi Swap, you know, even Dogecoin still continues to go. Uh, you know, who knows where the top is? What about losses though? Top 100, any big losses? No, nah, nothing. And look, even the things that have had losses, except for MDEX here, uh, you know, you're going to lose 7%. Are you going to worry about that if you've made 143%? No. You're going to lose 8%. Are you going to worry too much if you made you know nearly 100%? No. All of these losses, there's hardly any losses there. All right, last but not least, I just want to have a look at a few charts. All right, ETH to BTC. It's still quite low. So this is ETH against Bitcoin. We have been way higher. So at the moment, uh, it's sitting around, what is it, uh, 0, uh, 0.43. It has been as high as 0.14, so, sorry, 0.12. So basically twice as much uh, is the uh, Bitcoin Ethereum equivalent that it's been for. And that's hard for people to understand, you know, that's Satoshi's and that, unless you're really into crypto. Let's just simply go have a look at the... Uh, dollar value. We are finally breaking out. Here was the old all-time high around, you know, 1400 and sort of 30, 1480, depending on which exchange you're on. And now we are in price discovery. And look at Ethereum. Cleanly broke out. And now I really do think we're going to get up to around sort of 2500 fairly quickly. I think that'll happen in the next couple of weeks. By the end of February, uh, would not surprise me. We may even have some heavy retracements in there and come back down and retest this before we get up to sort of 2,500.
But you got to remember, if you're if you bought uh, Ethereum sort of here around, you know, let's say around about sort of twelve hundred when it was down around about here, if it gets to twenty five hundred, you've more than doubled your money. Whereas Bitcoin, we can go to Bitcoin, and it's breaking out, which is good. But if you were lucky enough to buy, you know, Bitcoin down here at twenty eight thousand seven hundred. It's got to go a long, long way to kind of double. I mean, you know, I suppose that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. For Ethereum to double uh, is still kind of the same as Bitcoin doubling. They have to double and that affects, but it's just how much money has to go into it for it to happen. You know, to go from, you know, 1,200 to 2,500 is not so hard, but to go from, you know, 27,000 to basically nearly 60,000, that's a little bit harder. All right, last but not least, let's have a look at Aave. Boom! Has just gone on an absolute tear. Uh, and I did get into it sort of over here. I built a new position because I thought it was going to break out, and it did. But it was a bit of a fake. Actually, I got into it around about here, and it retraced, then broke out, came and did a retest. And now look at that. Uh, just, you know, setting new all-time highs. I am Synthetics Network, Chainlink, and uh, Aave. They are my biggest uh, positions in the altcoins. That's where I'm still continuing to dollar cost average into things like that. Uh, amongst other projects, but not so much Bitcoin because it's already in price discovery. I already have my position. It's not to say I won't put any money into Bitcoin, but I think the altcoins are the better sort of, they're riskier, but they are the better play for the really, really big gains. Because if Bitcoin somehow manages to go to 300, so it's sort of 10 X's from here, Ethereum will probably 20 or 30 X and the other smaller coins will probably 50 to 100 X. There's no guarantees in life that any of that happens though. So just, you know, there's no guarantees that Bitcoin makes it to 300,000. It might not even make it to 100,000. I'm confident it will. I believe it'll go to at least 100, 150,000, but no guarantees and yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But so much good news happening out there at the moment. I hope you're all as bullish as I am. If you could do me a favor, go down and click on that like button. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell icon. That'll give you updates when I'm putting out daily uh, content and when it's coming out. Love to know your thoughts down below. What is your most bullish project? What are you most bullish about? You know, is it something in DeFi? Is it a non-fungible token? You know, is it Ethereum or Polkadot or Cardano? Uh, always looking for, you know, a different opinion. So please put down below what you're most bullish about. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. We should all be on that gain train at the moment. Things are looking fantastic. And I'll see you next time.